Garrett. Do you know the lead time? So uh, we're just using the in PowerPoint one. If you want one, you just go like this or I can move them. Great. Okay. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, everyone. So you've heard a lot today about Fall Creek varieties. Thanks to Chad getting up and, and talking. And then yesterday you heard a good presentation about the trial at uh, Mount Vernon Station, and, and a lot of that was the Fall Creek varieties as well. And then hopefully you've made a trip over to our booth, talk with the grower support who know way more about these new varieties than I do. But I'm going to get up here today and talk a little bit about some of our new varieties. I am the U.S. Blueberry Reader for Fall Creek. Monday will be my first anniversary, my first year on the job. So before that, I was working all in tree fruit. So most of you are new faces to me, and I've had the pleasure to meet many of you and excited to uh, get to know you more in the future. Well, I've got a fabulous job, and one of the best things is working with Fall Creek and that they're really true to their mission. And that's cultivating exceptional plants, relationships, and innovative solutions to optimize consumer success. And a big part of that is bringing new superior varieties to the marketplace in the form of uh, high quality uh, plants. So I'd say new blueberry varieties, these were all released in the past few years and are now really first getting to large scale commercial production. And I'm going to go through these as we saw them in the season in Lowell, Oregon this year. For us, that started with Clockwork, which we actually picked second pick Duke. So on the very early size, this is, uh, you know, we used to say mid-season. I'd like to say it's mid-early season variety. It's a medium size, medium blue. It's firm uh, when fresh harvested off the bush. It's got an intense berry flavor. And then the plant itself has a really nice, extremely upright growth habit and a narrow crown. Here it says the primary use is for process, and that is indeed the case, or quick turn fresh market because it does not hold up in the cooler. Key qualities of clockwork is it does really, really well in IQF. Low leakage, maintains a high flavor, and maintains some firmness when thawed. And then, as I mentioned, that narrow crown and the concentration, this can go one pick if you let the fruit really hang, uh, makes this an excellent machine harvest uh, potential variety. Concerns is that we don't recommend this for the fresh market. If you put it in the cooler longer than a, a week, you're going you're gonna to be dissatisfied. It loses that firmness uh, and the flavor does diminish to some degree. And due to the, uh, the background of clockwork, we'd assume that this might have some cold hardiness issues. In this region, uh, we have not seen too much of that cold uh, winter damage on canes, uh, but we have seen some issues with yield and that is just not setting fruit buds. So that would be my concern there. Moving along, Blue Ribbon. This is our early mid-season. This falls kind of right with clockwork. They're between Duke Draper. We find that it has a large berry size. It's a beautiful light blue. It's very firm, and it's got a fabulous flavor. Uh, the, the flavor really catches your eye. Bush itself is spreading. It's got long laterals. Uh, it definitely needs some trellis, and this is primarily for the fresh market. Key qualities of Blue Ribbon is that flavor. It is really exceptional and it maintains it throughout storage. Eating these several weeks after harvest, uh, it's still amazing how much aroma you still pick up in that fruit. And we do find that it also maintains that firmness throughout storage. So Chad said, said earlier in his presentation, he's seen a lot of small fruit size on Blue Ribbon. And in some cases, we do have some variable fruit size. At our farm in Lowell, we, we tend, it's one of the largest berries that we harvest every year. And I've seen grower fields where this is an incredibly, you know, it's a large berry and it's uniformly large size. But Blue Ribbon is, is a gift that keeps on giving, as I've been told. It's five or six picks can, be, can really go on in uh, long term. So if you're doing a, a U pick, this might be the variety for you. But if you're wanting to really concentrate, this is probably not going to be the one. As Chad mentioned, it is sensitive to heavy soils. Uh, root diseases and it does get verticillium. It is susceptible to verticillium. New thing we learned this year. Top shelf. This is our uh, mid-season staple. It's a very large jumbo berry. This year it was the, the largest fruit we had on the farm of our varieties that we trialed. It's a beautiful sky blue, firm when fresh, juicy, great flavor. The plant itself is absolutely beautiful. Nice vase shape, 
narrow crown, and you have really strong canes. This we do uh, advise is, is a great fresh market berry. As I mentioned, large jumbo size. It's got that good right mid-season, and the plant's really easy to harvest, presents that fruit on the outside. Concerns is that it's only moderately firm. Uh, when, when picked uh, fresh, it, it's, it's definitely firmer than the standards, uh, but it's not going to uh, really pop in your mouth like some of the uh, newer varieties. Again, this, uh, as Chad mentioned, one of its parents is Magnolia, a southern high bush, but we have actually not seen much winter damage. We've been pleasantly surprised in eastern Washington, where it's had some really cold trials, and then also out here we have not had much winter damage and have had good floral bud set in uh, northwest Washington. You do get a little off color uh, in some early picks, especially in cold years, and it is somewhat sensitive to diseases similar to Draper. Cargo, this is uh, our, our later season, I like to say mid-late season, medium to large berry, light blue, firm. It's got a nice balanced flavor, and uh, more than just about any of our other varieties, it's got a very upright growth, narrow crown, and can be very vigorous. And we recommend this for the fresh and processed market. Key quality of cargo is its high yield potential. This is, a, a, it can set an amazing number of fruit buds per cane, uh, which con on the contrary, it means you need to be aggressive in your pruning. You have to balance your fruit and your leaves if you want to get high quality fruit on cargo. It does have really good machine harvest potential uh, in that it's firm when fresh and with the bush shape. And we, we have at the Lowell Research Farm, this has done fairly well in cold storage in our evaluations over the past seven, eight years. This year is the first large scale commercial harvest of cargo. And uh, we have seen, uh, in, in some cases, some breakdown after harvest. Uh, and so this just goes to highlight what they were saying in the caneberry presentation that has been mentioned before. With these new varieties, we really need to just get, get more data, get these out in more grower fields to really find what's the best way to manage this. Maybe we need to change our irrigation practices a little bit to reduce some of that college uh, post-harvest. And then finally, last call. This is our very late season uh, berry. It was released for that Elliott window. It's medium with the large, very nice light blue color, uh, really striking on the bush, has a classic blueberry flavor, can be extremely vigorous, and like the others, it does have a nice upright growth that we've been selecting for. We recommend this for the fresh and processed market. Key qualities is that it, it has a very high yield potential. Uh, in light cargo, it can put on a lot of fruit, so you do have to manage that. It's very late, late season. Uh, Elliot into Aurora, and the, the, the selling point for this really is that you're getting a lot better fruit quality uh, at harvest than some of the other late seasons. That said, we have seen this year with some of the first really major uh, commercial production that you're getting a good bit of shrivel and cracking in your later picks. So now to the fun stuff, some of the newer varieties. Uh, I'd like to spend some time to introduce you to Valor. ZF0870, this was uh, really released in 2017, so this year. This falls right on top shelf Calypso in that mid-season window. This is a large to jumbo berry, and it is very uniform in its fruit size. And, uh, absolutely beautiful. But it's just medium on firmness, and it's got a, like, I like to say, a neutral flavor. It's not going to piss you off, but it's not going to make you excited. So it's got a, a really nice bush. It's upright. Medium high vigor doesn't have the same vigor as, as last call or cargo, but can get to production pretty quick, and we recommend it for the fresh and processed markets. This, uh, for a while, sat, sat around. We didn't release it because we were a little afraid that, well, it's not the firmest berry around, doesn't have the best flavor. But eventually, in all of our trial sites, it was, it was the workhorse and the survivor. A lot of our sites have really heavy soils, drought stress, a lot of heat, and Valor, year after year, had a uniform, solid harvest, and the plants grew uh, very well. As I said, it's a, it's a mid-season variety, possible uh, blue crop replacement for this in the BC area. It's uh, got great cold hardiness. One of the parents is Legacy, which is interesting, to, but, but it's actually done really well in this area and eastern Washington. Have not seen any uh, major cold damage. And excellent self-compatibility. Uh, have not seen any pollination issues. Concerns with this is if you're really going for flavor, this is not going to be the berry for you. Uh, and then uh, the, we, 
Our extended storage data is limited at this point. We haven't seen any major commercial uh, harvests yet, and in our trials, it's been just middle of the pack. Finally, wrapping up with Calypso. This is a late season, large berry. It's absolutely beautiful, really nice light color. It's got an excellent flavor, uh, still sort of on the neutral end, but it's quite nice. Nice, upright, plant shape, slightly open, and we recommend it for the fresh and processed markets. Calypso was actually developed by uh, Michigan State University. Key qualities of Calypso is it fits in that late, uh, mid-late season right with Liberty. The large berries have, are absolutely beautiful. This year at our research farm, it was probably the most striking fruit in the field. Uh, it's, it's easy to prune, presents the fruit nicely, and it is a nice, vigorous, uh, upright bush. Possible concerns uh, we've had is yield. We have seen in the past few years that the yield's been on the lower end of our standards. This year it, it was competitive with Ballard, so maybe it's just a little slower to get going. And then on the bush, like Chad mentioned, the, the texture tends to be a bit mealy. Uh, interestingly, when we put this in the cooler, we found that it improved for several weeks, getting firmer and uh, actually the flavor being uh, pretty good after four or five weeks in our cooler. With that said, I'd just like to finish up some general statements about the breeding program uh, and where we're going. So like the other programs, we're really focusing on yield. Makes sense. We're working on adaptability, machine harvestability, and then self-compatibility. For the berry, paramount is firmness, uniformity of size, quality, continuing to improve the flavor across the seasons, and then something that we can put in the cooler for the long term. And that's not going to shrivel, it's not going to crack, it's going to maintain good flavor and firmness. So into the future, we're definitely going to have a major, continue to have a major focus on varieties for the Pacific Northwest. As, as you probably heard mentioned in some of the keynote uh, talks, uh, we are a global company and we breed for all, wherever you grow around the world. But uh, my job is to solely focus on high chill to mid chill varieties and particularly for the Pacific Northwest. So we're here uh, for the long run and we're really interested to continue to work with you to pinpoint our breeding targets and get you the varieties that you need. One of the things we've been doing for many years since we started the breeding program and before is collaborating closely with other blueberry breeding programs, Chad Finn's program in particular, as well as Michigan State University, North Carolina and others. And we're hoping to continue that so that we're not just gonna focus on developing our own proprietary genetics. We're working to get, help get other new great varieties into the nursery and uh, help the other growers to get you uh, what you need. So make sure you eat your blueberries. And with that, you might have one minute for questions. We've got time for questions. We'll, and we'll, I'll open it up to any of the breeders if anyone has, or any of uh, the, discussed this last session. One second, right, right. Just how, how concentrated is Calypso and last call as far as ripening? Calypso, Calypso uh, this year for us is very concentrated. Uh, we, we tend to let it hang a little bit longer than probably commercial farms would, but we were two picks on Calypso. Last call is similar to the other late season varieties. It is not as concentrated. Uh, definitely multiple pick variety. Any other questions? Oh. You might just need to flip that on, Tom. How do you do it? What are the plans for trialing material up in this area? So, the question was, what is our plan for trialing material in this area? Yeah, that's always the question when these come out. How well are they going to do up here? Is there any way you guys can get some advanced trials going up here before or to accelerate that process? Well, that is definitely something we are interested in doing. We do currently have one trial in the, in the area, but it's a very small scale, uh, just a, a few plants per selection. Uh, and we, we are interested in getting more trials of the newer varieties. That's something we can do easier. And so getting preview plants out to any grower who's interested in seeing this material. That's exactly what we need. So that things like the uh, issues we're seeing with cargo this year, where maybe it's having a little breakdown issue, if we could get those out earlier and identify those issues so we can figure out what can we do horticulturally management wise to uh, make it still a successful release. No.
so that the the new, the trial block at Mount Vernon that was in I don't know if you saw the talk where they have some of the varieties. It's a rather small trial, uh, but we are interested in, in definitely helping to continue that and help expand that. But we don't have any new cement plans on uh, on trials. But I'd love to talk to you afterwards if you have any suggestions and ideas. So Tom, just real quick, we have an ongoing trial. So Thanks, Paul. 